Look out, footy's back. G'day, I'm Stewie Jew. Wait, I'm not the former coach of the Gold Coast Suns. Well, I do rivalry maybe a bit of girth after a big weekend on the tins from a birthday, but I am James Clements. This is the AFL Today Show, your new favourite one-stop shop for all things footy. And joining me for this midweek madness show are local weirdos, a.k.a. Footy Enoughs, a.k.a. AFL experts, Alex Donnelly over there. I was going to say, similar to Stewie Jew, you do have a good 15 minutes in you, and then that's about it. I've also got a booming left leg. Yeah, there we there go. You go. I didn't even think about that. And in the middle, it's the stats boy, yeah. Liam McGallion. We might have to do that. Best just quarters of football of all time. Stewie Drew has to be up there. That was unbelievable. It has to be up there. It is. It was it's in a grand final. It was unbelievable. Done. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I'm really great over 15 minutes. Just no problems <laughs> outside of that. Cooked, mate. Uh, and also joining us later on to talk all things Brisbane Lions and the Gold Coast Suns is the Courier Mail and Code Sports, his very own Callum Dick. He jumps on to talk all things Suns and Lions, which is really good, so stick around for that. Before that, though, make sure you subscribe to all the other good stuff. The AFL Today on socials. Get around this wherever you get your podcasts, of course. Like, review, star, comment, or we'll send Stats Boy to go to your house and just stand there looking weird. Either way, footy's back. Wednesday news. The news ticker. A lot of you. Let's yeah. do it. Whoa, Holly Reed, bam, bam, whoa, Holly Reed, bam, bam, make $1.8 million. Whoa, Holly Reed. So, there was a report yesterday mm. that Victorian clubs are looking at Holly Reed and prepared it's to offer. Definitely Essendon. All right. <laughs> Might prepared be North, to, even as well. That's the funniest one. Yeah. Uh, prepared to offer Holly Reed a 10 year contract worth $18 million. Do you have to do How these we, ones? <laughs> million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yes. How are we feeling about this? He's played, what, 10 games? I think that's. I don't think anyone should have a 10-year contract in any sports because they, they could get injured or things like that, so I don't, I don't like it. Give uh, If Chad Warner's only get, getting offered 1.4 for what he's currently doing and Harley Reid's getting offered 1.8, you just look at him yeah, like... Yeah, but who do you think's going to have a better career? Doesn't matter, but you're oh. looking at it right now, you're like, I'm going to give one of these players yeah. $1.8 million. You look at it like Chad Warner, given current output. In three years' time, when his rookie deal runs out, it will be like... Give him three. No, nah, fair enough. Not bad. Yeah. I also like that Carlton's like, well, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that a thing? We've got to guess which clubs it is? It's, well, it's, it's absolutely Essendon. Yeah. It's, it's 100% me going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll pay, I'll, Harley, I'm on the old dog and bone to Harley Reid going, I'll pay you 1.8 <laughs> mil. Just come over. Just come over, man. He's like, oh, really, Jim? I'm like, yes. <laughs> I don't have that cash, but uh, we'll, we'll make sure we get some, it. It could also be St Kilda. They've got money. Sure. Yeah, but who wants to go to St Kilda, honestly? No. If only North hadn't just, you know, emptied their, like, the piggy bank on to go and getting a washed coach. No, I, we still have lots of money because we're not... Yeah, because yeah, they're offering Zerha and LDU all the money. Mm. Good, good idea. It'd be the funniest thing in the world if they did try to pay Harley Reid <laughs> 1.8 million. Honestly, uh, let's do it. Jared Pollock. <laughs> nice one. Danger got off as well. No suspension after his dangerous tackle. The pinned arms. Oh, but you see, sir, I had his arms pinned, but it wasn't malicious, and I, I was think... doing everything I could to stop him from hitting himself. It's like, were you, though? I think did say gave him the pedigree. No, I think that was the perfect tackle. I don't think he did anything wrong. I don't know if it was the perfect tackle because he had both arms pinned, and that was their argument. You're, like, you're you told could... when you're growing up at Auskick, or not, I was kicking. You can't tackle. I was kicking. You're not allowed to tackle. You got to tackle the tackle dummy. Under yeah. ten, you're told pin the arms. And what? Have you ever they... made a tackle? Yes. Yes, I, I have actually. And yeah, I know those, those, that was those a perfect big chimpanzee arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely done that. <laughs> what? So. <laughs> that seems wrong, but anyway. Um, anyway, I, don't, I thought that was a perfect tackle, which we can get into a little bit later. Yep. Tomahawk. Sticking with some cats is to miss six to eight weeks with this some sort of weird. What are they like? They're referring to it as like this uh, foot explosion. Yeah, basically <laughs> non-specific weird ailment, and you're like, oh, that sounds medical. <laughs> sure, like because he's yeah. had so much damage to his foot over the years, it just exploded. All right, yeah. that sounds probably. Good. So foot blew up. Yeah, yeah it cooked <laughs> like a tire. It's it a just tire. put some ice on it. You'll be right. Is this just when Geelong are out of the eight and they can't make finals, and it's one week to go? It's like. Yeah, we're just going to stick him in the goal square. Can Hopefully you get through a game five, with yeah. some injections? Yep, sweet, bang. Yeah, that's why they said six to eight weeks, yeah, I think. Nine games like, ago. I'll tell you what, you might get a bit of a send-off there at the end of the season, just pop him in just once the... bear uh, in the square type area. To be honest, he could help. He could save their season. What an absolute that'd run be home cool, that'd yeah. be. Yeah. Just goes out there and kicks five. Uh, Alex Pierce, another injury update there, stats boy. Yeah, forearm fracture, three to four weeks. I reckon that's... They, they're lying about that. They, there was all these reports saying that it was a lot worse. A forearm fracture. The I don't clubs know. literally come out it's like three to four. Weeks. I don't know. I, I reckon they're just saying. There was that. also something to do yeah. with his elbow as well. Yeah, and so, it's like that seems problematic. It seemed a lot worse than three to four weeks. There was even reports it was going to miss the whole season. Now it's only three to four weeks. 
I reckon that's a bit fishy. Bit of a worry for We'll find out in four. And he's been awesome, like almost all Australian form, a lot of people are saying. Andy Brayshaw, as reported by our very good friend who was on last week's show, yes. Eliza Riley. Andy Brayshaw, that handsome gentleman, has gone off with a sore quad slash hammy. Yeah. Ooh. Not if, great. Yeah, if he's out, Pierce is out, there's some huge outs for Freo. Freo have a... So she said, Brayshaw came up, bothered by something at the main training this morning, came off the track to be assessed and has just attempted a fitness test, but dogs have taken him, docs have taken him off the track again. Dogs, Seems to dogs be, have taken yeah. him. Yeah. Just just dogs. Yeah. Get him these, back! These dogs have Wait, dragged him. Caleb, yeah. save him! Ah, oh, the dogs have got him. <laughs> Seems to be gesturing towards his quad, hip, hamstring region. So He that, might be okay. You know what? Right. Leg blew up. Leg blew up. <laughs> they play Sydney this week. You definitely need Andy Brayshaw if you yeah. want to win that game. Yeah, Losing Pierce yeah, already yeah. just oh, wait, Further update. On closer inspection, he has a massive cork on his right quad. It is black and blue and has blown up since the weekend. Oh. That's not good. Corkies, though, if you feel like it's just like it's a bit of a tough one, you, they're the sort of things where it goes, oh, we'll give it a week and it'll be, it should be right. Sometimes it lasts Sometimes a little bit longer. Yeah. Sometimes far less. So medical doctor. Medi- medical doctor Jim. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we'll see good. what happens. Doesn't sound great for you. Uh, Will Ashcroft, though, this is good news the for the flying Brisbane mullet. The best hair in the business. We've got a lot of time for Will Ashcroft. Yeah. And he's here. Dead Walter. Yeah. Son of a gun as well. So we talk about Will Ashcroft with Callum Dick later on in the show. We do. And I'm excited. Yeah. He's an excitement machine. So just keep, like he yeah, goals from the boundary, clearances. It's like Bailey Humphrey, it feels like Will Ashcroft from Wish. <laughs> Every so often, you're like, that was awesome. Just imagine Will Ashcroft doing it. Oh. So we've got Will Ashcroft at home and they lift up Bailey. Uh, that is harsh, but it's <laughs> tough. With his new sleeve tattoos. Yeah, tough one. Yeah. Uh, and the other bits of Bob's here. Bont, what's going on with, uh, how do we mangle the name? Like the the commentator, Marcus Bont, the, the, the Oh, yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Like During the, the guy who tried to uh, say Ange Postacoglu when he signed for Tottenham. <laughs> yeah, or when Basel tried Postacoglu. to say Giannis <laughs> Antetokounmpo. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Great job, Basil. As per usual, <laughs> hey, he's the mayor. Glory. He's the Lord Mayor. Yeah, the Stick Lord. To doing that. The Lord Mayor of Idiotville. <laughs> anyway, oh, got him. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> but the bond off the track. What's going on? I think he'll be fine. Sick of carrying the Western Bulldogs. There's just a new. He has to have something happen midweek to him for him to play well. That's his thing. Guess when who they play this the weekend, week. Jim? North. North. Yeah. Nice one. <laughs> Huge game. That's just a that's a tick that one off as an RDO for Bond. Uh, right? yeah. But also, <laughs> wait, did the Western Bulldogs win their last game or did they lose? Because I'm just going win, loss, win, uh, loss, win, loss. They won, didn't they? Yeah, they won. Yeah, well, then they'll lose. There you go. All right. Actually not. There you go. That's all the news you need to know. Midweek winner, loser of the week, uh, Danger. Probably gets off because he basically apparently gave a 40 minute soliloquy yeah, he did. about how great of a bloke he is. <laughs> He's like, well, you know, how I live in Mogs Creek. It's his great little spot down the ocean road. It's like, sir, the question was, is this your handwriting? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what are we doing here? Like, it feels like this is very similar, to be honest, Did like he, the Charlie Cameron thing. It's like the, it is a little bit of the good bloke rule where hmm. you like you front the tribunal and you're like, no, no, seriously, I did everything I could. And you're like, he's just a good speaker. But it's also, he's also the Players Association yeah. president. That like, helps probably, like, yeah. Come on, man. It's like, oh, we don't, want any prob- <laughs> we don't have any problems here, Mr. Dangerfield. Uh, fine. Yeah, but it's also go. was that he was talking for 40 minutes by the end of it, like, Right up, shut up, you're off. Just yeah, go just away. Go away. Yeah. We started at 6.30, not 5.30. Just go just away. Go away. Just like I've missed dinner. <laughs> Zeta's like, I want my schnitz. <laughs> yeah, he always has schnitz, doesn't he, go there? I, well, I was talking to a mate about this who is a Geelong fan. He thought he was going to get a week just because of... Uh, I did too. Yeah, you know, People thought he was going to go, but didn't deserve it is what a lot of Geelong people say, just because of all the other weeks and things like that. But I don't think that tackle was was bad at all. It happens like, in footy. Like He's a winner of the week because they obviously have a huge, huge, huge game this yeah. weekend, right? Yeah. And it's the Bombers. They play the Bombers. Without danger, you'd be like, oh, geez. But with danger, that nah, makes it a little bit different. Mm. That leads us very nicely into this week's Yeah, Nas. Hey, did danger pull the wool over the tribunal's eyes? I did everything I could, sir. I didn't just pin his arms and ram his head into the ground, sir. I tried to lean back at everything, sir. I just had my legs pulled under from, from under me, sir. He didn't ram his head into the ground. It was well, a bit of momentum. That happens in footy. I, I don't think so, but a lot of people... He did talk well, so I'll, I'll give I him think that. that's the entire point, yeah. bro. Like, I think the wool over the eyes is like, literally, I've talked you out of the decision <laughs> you've made. And that's basically how I got my uh, wife to marry me. So I was going to say, there's, there's a correlation here <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Just keep talking. She's like, just... Oh, All right. <laughs> whatever, red man. Shut up. <laughs> and ten years later, sucker. <laughs> Seventeen years. Later. Jeez. Uh, the point being, basically, he's talked and talked and talked and talked, and he's like, "Oh, well, you see, like, I could, it could have been worse. I could have actually, like, you meant to go through, and my momentum was, oh, I tried to pull it back. It's I like, agree with you. If I was trying to hurt him, I could have. You're like, that doesn't sound 
like it's helping your argument. They shouldn't probably say like that. He yeah. still hit his head on the ground. Like, and I think this is the conversation we always have with these sorts of decisions. It's like the simple hard and fast rule of like doing what you can to prevent head trauma. And he's like, oh, I'm the president of the Players Association. I know all about head trauma, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yes, you're friends with Joel Selwood. We understand that. <laughs> Bye. But the point being, like he sort of talked and talked and talked. There should just be at least the hard and fast rule of like, yeah, it was still not exactly the world's safest tackle. You still ram mm. the dude's head into the ground as part of the tackle one week. And I feel like everyone should be like, that seems fair. It's just been, they've just been inconsistent. I'll give, I'll give them that. I, I don't think that was that bad, but I don't think a lot that have gotten weeks were that bad as well. So if you're going to give one, you probably should give this one, but I don't think it was that bad. That's my point. Yeah. I think if no, you're going to do it, fair enough. you do it. Yep. They shouldn't be like, oh, he talked really well and he's a good bloke. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Alex? Um, if you smash someone's head in the ground, you should get away. Oh, I wasn't Simple. smashed into the ground. It was literally like a, a, a momentum thing. I, I don't know. I, everyone's putting it out of context, I think. Did I, like how, I, I like how you being like on board with people getting concussed as being the hill you've decided to die on this week. This yeah, is the cool. I love people this, getting concussed. This is cool. cool what are you talking trauma? about? Yeah. Well, you, were, you were against Peter Wright he copying He couldn't have done anything there. You're allowed to pin the arms. There's no rule against you pinning That's the arms. That's literally the thing. It's like if no, you but, pin the arms and slam their head into the ground, you get a week. Right. It's literally written into the tribunal no, rules. If, if you just tackle someone normally, you're allowed to pin the arms. I don't like how people say, oh, you pin the arms. You're literally taught to tackle to pin the arms. That's all I'm saying. I don't like how everyone keeps saying Stats guy hates player welfare. He does. Yeah, nah, did BT's horrible commentary of this leave a sliver there for danger to sort of talk it out of like, oh, Sam Walsh has thrown his head into the ground again. <laughs> that was out of bounds, etc. It was out of bounds of the rules. Oh, I don't know. They, they don't listen to I can open the sliver. Well. Maybe, possibly. Just saying. I don't care enough. <laughs> hey, would you give Harley Reid $1.8 million a year? Yeah, nah. Nah, Swans don't have the money. Sure. Uh, yeah, but not for 10 years. I would for five years. All right. Yeah. Is the funniest outcome of its north behind this? Yeah, surely no. we did, we yes. obviously didn't get him in the draft. We're not going back there, surely. That, what? That's, that would be the funniest that's outcome. Funny. That would be so awkward. It would annoy me so much. Why would it be awkward? Lose yeah, one game. If you lost a game, you wouldn't be in this position. It's like losing. Uh, I love the idea of like you guys losing one game, costing you eighteen million dollars. It's also been at the Gold Coast not being able to win below the twenty eighth degree. I that's think right. Brady Rollings, who's running the uh, recruiting and stuff at North, I don't think he's gonna. He'd be like, we just can't go there. It's just it's so. Just wait, weird. you're gonna say no <laughs> to the greatest player? Who have ever been born? That's a combination of Chris Judd, Lance Franklin, Gary Ablett Senior, Junior, and Matthew Lloyd. Well, he's only played two games. Buddy so Franklin yeah, in there he well. did. He yeah, did. He did. Yep. The fact nice. that he's getting compared to Lee, 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 Lee Matthews, yeah. Alex Jezelenko, Gordon Coventry. I'm saying no, together. just because it's awkward. That's the only reason. All right, <laughs> like your dating life. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, is Ken Hinckley the most successful bad coach? <laughs> yeah, ever. <no>. ever. <laughs> wait. Um, most successful. Wait, you've just double. It's interesting, right? Hundred. So over 10 years of tenure as well, right? This The entire thing is like Fox Footy had the simple graphic of uh, 200 wins. What's yeah. your win percentage? He's basically at 60%. Oh, okay. And he's like 15th all time. Yeah, but then you look at the – they had the 15th to 30 out there. It's like want a flag, want a flag, want a flag. Sheedy, Lee Matthews. It's like it's literally all the greats. Even Alistair Clarkson, not a great, but still has one He's flags. a great coach. Come four on. Flag. Not at North. Dim but at he's won what four flags? Dim is right there too as well. So he's won a lot of games. Yep. He has not won a flag, yep. nor has he actually made a grand final. So this is the biggest thing I think the power uh, fans have, like, you know, off, coming off the booing on the weekend. He helped turn this team around. He turned the club around. They were, remember, like, they were covering the seats with tarps. Yes, That's Port right. Port Adelaide were dead in the water, basically. That was when they were at Footy Park. Post Matthew Primus. Yes. Ken Hinckley and that success that he brought to the club has helped turn them around. The thing is... They're still not good. They, they also had a lot step, of talent yeah. the entire time, mm. and they've never taken that one next step. So Ergo, most successful, bad coach. They've had a lot of talent. I think helped the club. My point is always going to be, I think players will eventually sort of tune you out. I think players, there's definitely like a limit, uh, time limit. Even Alistair Clarkson was just like, peace out. <laughs> like, whatever. Sheedy, ran out of time in Essendon. Yeah. David Parkin and Carlton. Mm -hmm. Pagan at North even. Like, it sort of gets to a point where you just go, right, I've hit my limit. It feels like Hinkley's almost there. The weirdest part I find is that the AFL media just like, oh, but he's a great coach. It's like, is he though? Yeah. He's very well, good. He Don't get me wrong, but like, is, but yeah. he's, has he got the anymore. most out of these teams? I he hasn't got that final killer punch. Coaches as well, you, I think they need a change. 10 years is a long time, especially if you haven't won a grand final. It's good to have it's a change. Years, reset. Counterpoint. Sorry, 12 years. Yeah, yeah. John Longmire won a flag in 2012, made a grand final in 2022 with 
another two grand final appearances in between. He's the longest ever tenured coach, isn't he? Currently. Or currently but, that's, yeah. but that's what I mean is the Sorry, is the evolution. Same with Chris Scott with winning his two flags as well. So there's coaches that have evolved in the last decade. Uh, Ken Hinckley has had different playing lists, hasn't evolved. Like it's the finals record. Yeah, he's 156-105 overall. But he's five and seven in finals. He's won two elimination finals, a semifinal, and two qualifying finals. So then you go through his losses. They were straight sets last year. That was horrible. Yeah, that was really bad. I think the worst one, the worst ones, are 2021 and 2020 COVID prelim finals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they lost both of them at the Adelaide Oval. They were flying on top of the ladder. For and they were both really close. No, nah, they got absolutely There's one they got pumped. drilled in. There's another they got one drilled like by the Western Bulldogs like, and they lost to Richmond by home. a kick because it started raining in the That's third right. quarter and yeah. it got Richmond in the game. They also lost a prelim in 2014 and they've lost an elimination final and semifinal. No one cares about that. But it's like you've lost four prelims. Yep. So the other coaches in this sort of conversation, you think about Ross Lyon. I, I, I put Ross Lyon in there originally, and then I'm like, we probably should take him out. He had a winning record in 10 of the 14 seasons. Two losses and a draw in grand finals is, is yeah. the point of... He's, so he's like, made three grand finals. I think we say he's bad because of his game style, but it gets results. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'd argue a different coach with those teams that he had in St. Oh. Kilda and Frio... Do they maybe De- win it? Definitely St. Kilda because yes. they pushed Geelong all those years. But Frio, Enterprise, Frio were ones. never going to win that grand final, I think. Very, very young Frio. Interesting. Terry Wallace. I'm on board with this one. Yeah, mm. Fascinating sort of figure because he just had a massive tenure. was always mm. just sort of like up next. And, oh, we'll get him in. And it's like, is he good I remember or is he just loud? I remember when he was meant to go and coach the Swans, there was protests outside of the SCG. And in the end, they went, Going to listen to our fans, poor Roos. Yeah. How about him? Oh, that worked. Yeah. We're like, yeah! Terry <laughs> Wallace, two finals wins in seven appearances. Yes. With the dogs, yeah. That's tough. brutal, A couple isn't of it? prelims in back-to-back years with our favourites against Adelaide. Sticking with a bit of the Bulldogs team, Rodney Eade. This is my vote is for swan? the most successful uh, bad coach because without Gold Coast, his record is really strong. He, yep. he had Daniel Gorringe, for God's sake, at Gold Coast. They had a shed... They had a shed that they didn't even have proper training rooms when he was coaching at the That's Gold Coast. That's not his fault. No, no, that, he didn't have much to work with is what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why I'm saying if he didn't have – so he's a good coach, but he hasn't won a grand final. It took Sydney and the Bulldogs to a combined 19 finals. I, f- I even forgot about this. 1996. 1996 grand final. We got in the first two rounds, ended up minor premiers. Yeah. Lost the grand final. Yep. But, yeah, in his first ever coaching season, he, he made the grand final. But, yeah, just could never – just get that grand final. It did get to He's a point with the Swans where it's like, the, this was the Ken Hinckley part. It's like, you made your grand final early and there, there was never really, the Swans never went on with it again. He was the last like coach that just yells in your face. That's why they called him Rocket. He, and that's why he that's wore why. out his welcome yeah. in three different places. Yes, because yeah. everyone didn't like him in the end. <laughs> and then there's Brad Scott, your beloved Brad Scott. Oh, I think he's a very good coach. I think he didn't have much to work with. Took North to two prelims when we probably, the first year we shouldn't have even made finals. We had a pretty crap team. The second one we had a really good team. Went all chips in. I think he's a good coach and he's doing really well at Essendon. What, over, what do you have? Over 50% win record at North, which isn't too bad. I don't think he's. I, don't awesome. think he's I, I took this as like bad coaches as well. So I had yeah. a list which included <laughs> Ken Hinckley and Terry Wallace, but then I had Dean Bailey at Melbourne, Brendan Bolton at Carlton, Brandon Bolton at and Carlton, the worst yeah. of all, Damien Drum at Fremantle. What's his record? Uh, Thirteen wins, forty-four losses. Coached <laughs> nineteen ninety-nine and two thousand season. Got sacked in two thousand and one when Freya was zipping thirteen. And is now a parliamentarian. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. In Shepparton. Crazy. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I also can I zag. Sure. sure, that's what you always do. Carlton, fired David Park, which is like, we're sick of David Parkin. We need his much ballyhooed yeah. awesome assistant, Wayne Britton. Oh, that didn't oh, work. I didn't even Smash know who that cut is. to the worst bunch of years in Carlton history. Oh, right. Yeah. Where was it? What's the dude in port at the moment? That they, Josh like, Carr. Josh Carr. They're yeah. like, oh, no, like, he's like, the succession plan is there. We'll give Ken to the end of the year and we'll go to Josh. It doesn't always work. No. And we've seen it basically not work plenty of bloody times. I because think it's worked. Mick Malthouse, Nathan Buckley. It's oh, the handball. It's going to be awesome. Why? Three three times. You had Paul Rooster. Paul Rooster to John yeah. Longmire. No, well, yeah, Paul Rooster to John Longmire, but it was also uh, Rocket to Paul Roos, which that worked out pretty well, but it's Paul Roos to Simon Goodwin. Yep. Won a flag. So there's two. Happy days. But, but yeah, still. It, it, I think the theory behind it is good because like, they're like in the James club. Heard and just never that was great. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah, that did not work uh, out. Good stuff. Good chat. Enjoyed yeah. that. All right. After we chat with Callum Dick, we'll talk about the champion data, all Australian team, Oof. and our Brownlow update. Yeah. But let's have a chat about the Northern teams right now with the Courier Mail's Callum Dick. All right. Now we welcome on from parts up north. That's right. It's very, our very own Callum Dick from the Courier Mail. 
Because, we well, look, we've gotten to this point of the season where the Lions are back. Yeah. And who better to talk about this than someone right in the mix of it? Callum, thanks for joining AFL today. Hi, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, let's start right there, can we? We better. We might as well. Start. We really should. I just like how we're doing this on State of Origin Day too. Yeah, this yeah. is great. Is the colours, by the way. Oh, the colours. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, you're New South Wales. Yeah. Yeah. I don't if, really care. Uh, Michael Voss can turn up to Carlton training in Emma Rohn's kit. I think I can at least put the colours on for today. I so like that. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, fitted yeah. it out really well too. Yeah. Like, well, it's Vossi's just jacked yeah. to the nines. Like, what are you going to do? Vossi yeah. could still play. He could Very actually get out there for yeah. Queensland and they'd still win. Don't worry about that. Anyway, let's start with Brisbane. They're back. Is that right, Callum? Are they back? What are we doing? Are they back? <laughs> it feels like it, mate. So we were um, up here. We've been waiting for the penny to drop all season, basically. Yeah. And we've heard Chris Fagan, you know, say repeatedly that the stats say we're not as bad as we're, you know, as the scoreboard's been showing. And we're all saying, oh, is that true, mates? But, um, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the last couple of weeks they've definitely shown us. And in some areas I think they're actually uh, they're actually up on previous years, which might be Ooh. exciting and a bit scary for uh the rest of the AFL. For everybody else. Well, what do you think the problems were earlier in the season? And, like, I think we've sort of talked this out on this show that especially, like, after, I think, our last Thursday show on Sunday night show, it's like it seemed like their injuries had sort of just put a massive hole in that team and it took, it just basically took them a while to figure it out. Does that sound about right? What else do you reckon? Yeah, no, I think, I think you know, sometimes you can feel like the injury stuff's a bit overplayed. You know, every team deals with injuries. We've seen, we've seen Richmond this year, obviously, but... The big thing for the Lions is they haven't really had to deal with injury setbacks in the past. So last season, for instance, I think their their back six was the most stable of any in the competition. I think from their their whole back six to back seven that ran through there, they they missed a total of six games between them. Yeah, so right. so when when that suddenly gets changed at half halfway through the first game, you know, Kadeen Coleman goes out and then you've got a few more blokes go down and suddenly you're sort of scrambling. You haven't had to figure out a different mix before. So um, I think Harris Andrews' leadership there has been really crucial for them. Um, they obviously had to find that to move Dane Zorka back there. It took a while to figure out how to get him properly rolling and and everything. So I think it's just a case of obviously they lost they lost Jed Acock as well, who was the backline coach yeah. last year. So I just think it's, it's sort of they hadn't had to figure out what they had and it took them a bit of time. But, um, yeah, they've, they've finally seemed to, at least in that part of the ground, started to get rolling. I'd also suggest Eric Hipwood remembering that he's a forward and a footballer has, well, has helped. Like their last <laughs> five five games, four of them, they've kicked over 114 points. Yeah, yeah but, been awesome. I mean, kicking but, goals had been their problem. Hipwood also had to spend all this time trying to figure out which haircut he was going to get. <laughs> so he finally gets the right haircut. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, and that's, now that's he's part of the game. Out of his yeah. eyes, he got rid of the emo 2004 cut. Simple as that. <laughs> he's um, also... He's also, I hear that he's one of the blokes who's the most vocal in trying to get their goal song changed at any possibility oh. as well. So he likes to he likes to try and get it changed as much as possible. So maybe someone said to him, mate, if you start kicking more goals, then we'll start considering <laughs> Yeah, that. the goal song comes second. I like That's that. like yeah. a very good, yeah. like, owned, like, do your job. <laughs> yeah. We'll just like give you whatever this. song we have. Yeah, you got to you got to negotiate from a position of power, <laughs> yeah. right? He's like, exactly. I'm going to change my song, Nick. Kicks him goals. He's like, all right, I will, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, stats boy, you love a bit of Gabba stats. Of Take course. us through this one. Uh, yeah, so they got five of their nine games to come uh, at the Gabba, which is awesome. Uh, obviously, the Gabba Twire, everyone called it last year. Can they reassert themselves at the Gabba, do you think, Callum? Well, I think we've started to see that. Yeah. Um, again, so a lot of those those early losses at the Gabba was, as we said, when they had sort of, they're still trying to figure things out and they played some good teams. I mean, you know, they'll play Geelong when they're on a roll. They played the Blues at the start and they played Collingwood, who were also under a lot of pressure early on. So yeah. I think we've seen, um, even with the St Kilda game, you know, they blew out and then managed to hold on at the end. So I think we're sort of trending more to what we've seen from the Lions over the last, uh, you know, five or so seasons under Fagan. And it's definitely, I mean, if you're if you're a side travelling to the Gabba right now, you you don't want to be. Yeah, you'd be very worried. I think back a little bit. So, <laughs> except for the Sydney, yeah, unless maybe you're the Swans in round nine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That will be a, a belter. I'm actually flying up for that, and I, I can't wait for that. But is with their they've turned the form around, obviously. But is there still slight concerns with the back half because they they let St Kilda kick a hundred points, That's and so Hawthorne rare. obviously did that to them at Docklands as well. So there's been a few games where they've had scores quickly put on them because they've also had the, the draw with Adelaide and then also GWS absolutely pumped them. So it's still not, you know, right, but at least they're like, we're just going to kick more goals, so who cares? 
Well, that's sort of been, I mean, they've, they've been a, a relatively strong defensive unit under Fagan, but Ford of the Ball's always been their strong suit. They've been number one for inside 50s, territory, et cetera, around the clearance. And those numbers have been, have remained strong. I think the important part now has been exactly right. I mean, previously they were, it, it's now a case that they're actually now converting their territory, which they weren't doing previously. Um, and the big one is they're now, I think, the number one scores from turnover team and then the number one from not being scored scored against on turnover. And that's a profile that uh, I think eight of the last nine premiers have been in like the top six or something in that stat and they're number one in both of them. So it's it's weird to say that of a team that's I think ranked 10th at the minute, but they're playing footy that, um, you know, that should hold up if they can get to September. See, stats go. That was a stat. That was a great yeah. stat. That was a stat. Yeah, yeah I can, Where are I can those stats? Yeah. He can come on the show. So the Swans had been, up until last week, the Swans <laughs> had been number one in the league from points from turnover. As well, so and Brisbane have now jumped up to fourth, uh, the fourth most points scored in the league this season. Nice, Does yeah. help when you put 160 on Richmond. Yeah, they're putting 140 <laughs> every two weeks yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, before the sort of form turnaround, like how loud were the questions about Fagan up there? Um, yeah, probably not so much up here as in Melbourne. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit more of a bubble down there. Up here, I think sometimes you can. It's good and bad. You can get away from a bit, but. A lot of people up here, I, I suppose, we've been more plugged into uh, Fagan's sort of coaching method and style. So he's he's he cops some flack sometimes for um, some people say he has too much trust in his players, like people were calling for Hipwood to be dropped, etc. And we're now seeing the the fruits of of uh, of that of um, him staying true to Hipwood. So I think up here it wasn't so much, and the clubs the club for the most part has been. Yeah, has been very supportive of him. I don't think there was ever a, really a um, any concern that he might be gone after this season. We'll see how the rest of the year plays out, obviously. But I think a lot of the noise has mostly been from from people uh, down south spitballing. Yeah, nice one. I mean, Not it us, cer- no. certainly wasn't us. <laughs> oh, I don't actually think it was. <laughs> Cops loudly. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we were taught, what you said. He made the grand final. I think he was exactly. Good you get leeway if you make a grand yeah, final yeah. and then just have a slow start to the next year. Right? And then with the hip with thing, we're like, yeah, you'll kick six goals at some time in the next month and turn it around. <laughs> and they've also got reinforcements coming, right? Like Will Ashcroft this week. Oh. How stoked are people on him returning? Let's go. Yeah, I think. Um, some fans are divided a little bit because they want to see Ashcroft come back, but it's probably Bruce Reveal who, oh, who might be Bruce. the unlucky man to, to go out oh, or yeah, in the that. sub role. So, but I think, you know, obviously we'll, we'll know the teams for sure on Thursday, but uh, given Rayner and Hipwood both came straight back into the senior side off ACLs, I think it's more likely than not that uh, Ashcroft will be straight back in. And then I think the question after that is how they use him because mm. when he was up and flying the start of last season, McCluggage was getting less midfield minutes or less stoppage minutes, I suppose, and he was down a bit. So it's kind of almost, it's one of those good problems to have, but there's a lot of mouths to feed in that midfield and it only gets even more with Ashcroft coming back. So it'll be an interesting watch to see how exactly they use him once he gets back to full fitness, I guess. Yeah. Does, he, does to- he go back from huge McClug- McCluggage yeah. to medium size? <laughs> medium. But, it also, <laughs> but it also buys into something that we've said here on this show a year. Too many dudes. Too many dudes, too many too many dudes, dudes in the midfield. Good, it's a good problem to have. Yeah. Essendon have too many dudes for other reasons. North's got no dudes. Yeah. No, we got no. Yeah. I'll let <laughs> you. Uh, and the other sort of thing I want to hit on is like Charlie Cameron, like this, this might be just a personal thing. But I'm like, this is the week that Charlie's going to kick a bag. 20 bucks. And <laughs> it's just not happened, right? Like it, the tools are going bang. Like we've seen basically Hipwood and Joey Duckett's just alternate kicking massive yeah, bags. Much. And Charlie had a little bit of a moment there where he looked like he was going to be up and about against Adelaide last week. Um, Port Adelaide, rather. Port Adelaide, yeah. And it didn't quite stick. I don't know. Do you think there's anything sort of going on with Charlie? Is he off the, off the boil a little bit? I think it, it is a little bit of confidence and I haven't spoken to him and he's – I think – a guy like Charlie Cameron with his skill set is so much of it's confidence, right? I think I saw, I don't know if it was the Port game or maybe the Dogs game where there was a, a kick inside 50 and he probably could have got to the ball to market, but he kind of stopped and propped and let it bounce and then it was in the forward pocket and then it didn't really play out. And that to me was sort of like a, he's not quite back to the confidence and the, the levels that he had, but he also is still confident enough to try and do stuff on the boundary line. He's just not executing it enough. But that's where, again, I think we get to the Chris Fagan model of, hey, mate, you know, this, you know you're, you're still a great player. You haven't lost anything. I think this is where his coaching method and philosophy really comes in. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if Charlie has a big game 
on Friday or in the next couple of weeks and bang, get 20 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, yeah, legend do that. <laughs> you know, it's like Harry McFive last year, but it's yeah. apart from the Richmond game, which is just that they flogged Richmond mm-hmm. by a million points. He's only kicked more than two goals once. That was against the yeah. D's, funnily enough, but he hasn't kicked more than three goals in a game uh, since Collingwood, like in round 23 last year. Like Jeez. still had a great grand final kicking three, but he hasn't got like that yeah. above where it's like, oh, I've got a bag. I've mm-hmm. really impacted the game. That's right. I think... You know, we, we've obviously become accustomed to Charlie Cameron kicking bags yeah. of goals, right? Yes. I mean, he's done it against Collingwood, particularly the last couple of years. But he's still their number one forward uh, half pressure player yeah. as well, and he's elite in that. So even though he's not cashing in on the scoreboard, um, he's still up there for their score involvements, um, and the pressure he puts on inside 50 is crucial, as we know now. So even though, I mean, it's easy to look at the goals column and say Charlie's not having a great season, and mm. by all measures... You know, he is down on his all Australian form from last year, but he's still contributing um, pretty crucially as well. He's also yeah. missing a lot. Like last year, he kicked 59 27. He's kicked 21 19 this year. Ooh. And the year before, it was like 50 something goals and 20 behind. So yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, he's lost the accuracy. Just want to make it interesting. That's kind of a bit of the confidence thing as well, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah probably. Oh, 100%. You, know, you can see it sometimes. All right. Lions. Currently in 10th, they're 7 6 and 1. We've basically got a touch over a third left of the season. Where do they finish up, Callum? Oh, undefeated. No, um, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough because we've seen two sides of Brisbane. So I think, um, as I said before, I think the Swans game with the Gab will be really interesting because if Brisbane keeps playing the way that they're playing, they might be one of the only few teams that we could genuinely say might be able to knock off the Swans. So, yep. um, and the draw opens up for them now. They don't have to go to WA, and I don't think they've got to go to Adelaide anymore. As we've said, they've got five of the last nine games at home at the Gabba. So, um, yeah, if they keep up this form, I top four, I mean, they'd have to really push to do that. But we're seeing the Giants, the Cats, Port, Melbourne, they're all sort of slipping on form as well. So it might be a case of a bit of Stephen Bradbury get to top yeah. four. Or, nice. I think chance. right now we, sh- we have to at least be talking finals. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. Just like North. Still a chance. But, like North. No, we're not. I don't think anymore. <laughs> winning, winning a game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, the Suns. Oh, my beloved God. Gold Coast Suns. Oh, God, I love them. <laughs> you have beloved the four teams. That I'm a truther. Like. I've been a Gold Coast truther for a long time, but I'm losing it. <laughs> I'm a Gold Coast <laughs> member. Let's go. Like, uh, the first things first. I mean, how has Dimmer changed the perception mm. of the team up there? Yeah, I think the thing with Hardwick and um, when he speaks, people listen. So... Mm. Obviously, they've got him on board because he's been there and done that. He's won finals. He's won grand finals. As a coach, you go tick. But for a club like the Suns, who are in a really hotly contested market as well, they need someone who, as I said, when he speaks, people are going to listen. And they've started to get that. And it's not just it's not just media. It's not just fans. It's um, you know, it's it's sponsors. It's 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 everything that comes with being a face of a football club. And he's brought that. He's also brought on some some great assistant coaches. Sean Griggs come up. He managed to grab him from from Geelong as well. So it, it, we know how difficult it is for interstate clubs to attract quality coaches as well. So, Sean Griggs also just like I'm, I'm from Ballarat. If I get to move to the Gold Coast, let's go. Like, <laughs> back up, boys. I'm up. Exactly. It's a bit warmer up there. Yeah. The same thing with me. Like I'm just like oh, if you give me the chance to go to the Gold Coast, I'm there in a split second. I love that vibe. Um, yeah. To the biggest issue, though, obviously, is like they can't win away. We talk like, about that a lot. Yeah. Our biggest thing on the AFL Today show is that it's the 28th degree, was it the 28th degree latitude? So the yes. 28th parallel. Yeah. Basically, they can't win below it this season. Yeah. It's literally the latitude. They go below that, they don't win. They play above so that, they're laughing. So they need to play in Mackay is what you're telling me. Basically, like yeah. anywhere, just go above the parallel. Well, you're they're averaging good. 106 That's... points at home and only 57 points away, which we talked about last week. I still can't believe that. That's like, gross. What would you attribute that to, do you think, Callum? Um, I think if we look at it as well, my theory is they've obviously played good teams away. Yeah. They've also played good teams with good midfields. Yep. So a lot of a lot of what the Suns do stems from their midfield. And it's not a downhill skiing type type beat, but I mean they've played the Lions, they've lost to the Lions, the Swans, the Dogs, the Blues. Free on the weekend we saw, and they've been beaten around the ball. And I think when that's your one wood and you're losing that, particularly away from home, it's very easy to snowball. So, and if you look at, uh, I think I wrote a few weeks ago, like Noah Anderson's numbers kind of um, at home versus away from home, and yeah. I'm not putting this all on Noah because he's been fantastic, but 
away from home when this when the Suns are losing, he is well down on his output otherwise. So I think it's it's kind of a maybe a chicken of the egg scenario a little bit, but really it is, you know, we saw with the Blues, I mean Dimmer after that match said our midfield got beaten, they need to be better. So I think that's at least part of the problem is that they're coming up against really good midfields and they're not getting the jobs done. And a lot of that's happening on the road. So I think it was the St Kilda one that was the biggest one. It's like it just all set up yeah. perfectly with how St Kilda are going. It's like you come you, here, you've got to you win away. Them, come on. You've got to win away. The other ones you can sort of look at and go, Yeah, that makes finals sense. Teams, yeah. But losing to St Kilda when you're expected to be a finals contender is Yeah. Yeah. And especially when, yeah, it's not just that. It's also I think it's Raoul and Anderson have like seventeen and eighteen percent less score involvements when they're playing away from home. Mm. Yeah, tell like, that to my super coach team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> breaking my heart. Um, I mean, is there any concern about the Suns being out muscled? Like, it does feel like they do tend to have these moments where, it, like, especially on the road, a bit of Bruce free footy, and they play at home, and it's just like this beautiful game. Sometimes, where, like, it's just flowing and fast and good and effective and efficient. And then out, you know, outside of that, it sort of just gets a bit. Once it gets, you know, it's taken lost, to yeah. them, they just go, "Oh, had enough of that, boys." Pack it in. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to say without, you know, if you get the midfield group in a room and sit down, they're, they're honest. But there would definitely be some honest discussions happening. And before, uh, probably two weeks ago, I think it was one even before the St Kilda game, Hardwick said, you know, if, if our midfield keeps getting beaten up away from home, then we will have to start looking at putting more people in there. But yeah. they are a young side, you know. I mean, you can throw Bailey Humphrey through there. You can throw... Then you've got, you know, Dave Swallow can go through there, but he's not the Dave Swallow of, no. you know, five, ten years ago, that sort of stuff. So you've got your A-grade midfield too on paper and as we see at home, can more than do the job. It's just a matter of, yeah, what's what's happening on the road? And, I mean, they're, they're trying to change everything from when we do our captain's run to, you know, Dimmer joked, what what uh, what music are we listening to in the sheds <laughs> beforehand? So they're, they're clearly very... They don't know why there's such a drop off, and it might be as simple as they're just playing some really good sides on the road, and, and maybe some uh, some not so great sides at home. Oh, fair but, cool. Uh, well, they've got an awesome test this week, right? They play Collingwood yeah. at home. Ooh. So, if they, w- it just feels like at the moment, be the most Gold Coast thing ever. No, they'll win. It's at home. It's, it's at home. They'll win. It's yeah, but is it at home though? I mean, it's going to be a no, probably a ninety percent Collingwood. Yeah, that's true. That's so, it's school, a sellout. School yeah. holidays and sellout, and Collingwood fans think the most exotic location in the world is the Gold Coast. No, yeah. Bali. Bali, yeah. Bali, <laughs> Bali Gold Coast. Yeah. Yeah. Jazz star flights were cheaper to Gold Coast uh, <laughs> from Avalon. With no teeth checks on the plane. Uh, <laughs> I love that vibe. Um, outside of this, I mean, the roller coaster vibe though is probably just going to be a little bit tough for them to swallow. Like the smashing of Geelong in Darwin was yeah, just the Darwin remarkable. Suns, just unstoppable. And, but then. Poor midfield. Exactly, right? Like, do you think it literally just sort of comes down to that? Like, is there sort of more about, can we put a little bit more on this forward line that sometimes just disappears completely in some of these Other games? Other than Ben King, yeah. Ben King is, he's, is he's been awesome. But, awesome. but yeah. you look at their leading goal scorers, it's Ben King. And then it's a massive gap to like 13 goals to whoever's next best. It it's is like, wh- They're not helping him out. Ainsworth, Long, Lukosius, like it feel like, feels like you I'm get free. a little bit more from each of them, right? Hmm. Yeah, it's an interesting one because the thing as well is Harbuck's come in and this first year was about figuring out what he's got, right? So they didn't go look for free agents. They knew they were coming in with the draft and they've tried, they've, they've done a great job in blooding these youngsters as they could. But, I mean, you've got to play Jed Walter, but he's oh. still, you know, he's not he's not cashing in as a key forward. But we all, everyone looks at him, and says he will become a great player, right? Ben many Long would, many would say he's the greatest player. Tim's favorite saying. player of all, all time already is Jed Walter. Right. Right. I'm just like Jed Walter top. I'm just like all in all the merch. I'm just like any stock you can buy in Jed Walter. I'm just like money on the table. Just Let's like go. His Jed look, Walter. His hair, his hair. It's just hey, the vibe of the thing. When I watched, I watched the 16 year old throw. Um, uh, Palm Beach Karamani threw Liam Jones to the ground when Liam Jones was up there on his Ooh. AFL sabbatical. Yeah. 16 year old, they were training against each other, and I thought, you know what? Yes, yeah, so that's when I hitched my flag to to Jed Walter. Oh, that's so that's right. On board. There that's we go. Great. Um, but yeah, so uh, Ben Long, I mean, he started the season out of the team, and then he's forced his way in. Roses was in some great form mm. before he went down with the hammy, and he's just sort of redone it so they're still tinkering i mean in the back line and the forward line he's still tinkering to figure out what the actual mix is and when you're doing that on the fly with expectations of making finals for the first time in club history as well i mean there's a lot of moving pieces there so 
the coach just was forward and then he moved him down back and then he saw, oh, no, that was a mistake. So at least you're not – he's not – um Harbick, I mean, isn't sort of been like, oh, no, I've said you're going to go back there, so you're going to have to stay back there, my friend. He's, yep. he's gone, I've made a mistake, you got there. So Just make sure you play um, Lukosius in the NT and yeah. he's laughing. Yeah, right? he's the best. Exactly. Yeah, yeah we'll just play every game in Darwin. And then yeah. Even a Brownlow. He'll be Even the next Brownlow, yeah. 100%. Brownlow and a Coleman yeah. in the same yeah. year. <laughs> I love that. You've got some free agency vibes here though, Alex. Yeah, well, Daniel Rioli is obviously the big one. We don't need to go into Sam McClure's Dustin Martin. Uh, what do you mean we don't need to? It's like the greatest story in the world. <laughs> Dusty <laughs> Martin just follows his old coach up. I there. reckon he's just old done. cook Dusty. <laughs> but Daniel Rioli, he running off halfback given Richmond about they are entering a rebuild. Could you see where Gold Coast go, hey, let's get Daniel Rioli there running off halfback. Here's a couple of like early picks, maybe a first round and a second rounder just to try and entice Richmond because, one, they need kids, and, two, it gets uh, Hardwick back a player that he clearly loves. Hmm. I think if there's one position that the Suns, I mean, even last year, that if there was an available position, it was going to be across halfback. Hmm. Um, so, look, would Dima love to have Daniel Rioli running across halfback up on yes. the Gold Coast? Absolutely. <laughs> but I don't think that the Tigers are keen on that. I don't know that the Suns think that the Tigers are keen on that, that that Rioli is is gettable. Things could change. But the Suns also have Lockie Weller waiting in the wings who should be back in a few weeks, touch wood, touch everything. (laughs) Four blokes had two ACLs. But I think it's easy to forget as well how good he is when he's up and flying. So um, I think it'll be for them, it'll be a wait and see on what they can do with Weller. They'll obviously move Flanders back there in the meantime. As I say, if, Re- if they think Rioli is available, that absolutely well. love to yeah. have. I think, get him. Yeah. I think 17 other clubs would love to have a Daniel Rioli across halfback. So um, whether or not it's likely, I don't think so. But Nice one. Time. All right. Well, you know what? In. Rory Lobb's going to end up there. Is another four? <laughs> yeah, another, another, like another Rory Lobb. Just throw him in there. Yeah. Lobb's in. No He's, one wants Rory Lobb. Just put him in the forward line next to Ben King. It's fine. I sure. know. He's like the Oprah prize. You get a Rory Lobb. You get a Rory Lobb. You get a Rory Lobb. <laughs> Average uh, height, six foot four in the Suns, forward 50 next season. Love it. Let's go. <laughs> Tall boys. Uh, there we go. All right. Chips in. Do the Suns play finals this year? What's the ladder predictor for the last Ooh, bit of the season here? Close. <laughs> oh. That's much harder than the Lions one is because uh, I think I thought they would go down and handle business against St Kilda and kind of disappointed me and a lot of people in that aspect. Yeah, so typically. they really need to, but then they could turn up this weekend and, and beat Collingwood. So I think they've got North away, they've got West Coast away. So again, touch wood, we expect them. Sorry, mate, we expect them to be able to go and actually win a, a game away from home or two. Um, and then after that, I mean, you know, they've got the Tigers at the MCG in round 24. So it's definitely possible. Ooh. Imagine that. Their first game at the MCG all year is win an interfinal. So that would be awesome, love actually. Yep. Yeah. Hardwick against the, Richmond. I love yeah. that the 28th parallel is going to get the ultimate test, though. Yeah. Like The next, yeah, those North, three games. North, West Coast and Richmond Surely away. Surely they win a couple of those. Could the 28th so, parallel be undefeated? But, so if they beat... Collingwood, they have North Melbourne next week at Docklands. It would feel like the most Gold Coast thing right now to beat Collingwood and then get knocked off. I love it. I think they make it. I'm a true time. What, I the think finals? they make it. I, re- I just did a quick little ladder thing then. I can. I have them winning 13 games. If I think I – yes, I was asked to do something similar for uh, for the Herald Sun in tomorrow's paper, and I think what? I had them on 13 wins as well. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we're going. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's go. where they're playing, we're going. On the bandwagon. I'll go, I'll go to the last round, actually, Richmond Gold Coast. Yeah, because you, you can cheer on Jed Walter. You, you're not allowed to go to finals, though. Like, yeah. No, well, just, I, yeah, my team never makes finals. Exactly. <laughs> All right, there, there we go. That's been Callum Dick from the Courier Mail. Thanks for joining us, Callum. Appreciate it. Thanks, gentlemen. Appreciate it. All right, how good was that chat with Callum Dick? I love that because, yeah. look, I feel like he's on board with my 28th parallel vibe. And Jed Walter. And Jed Walter. Yeah. yeah. I'm all about uh, that. He was a Jed Walter fan before you knew about Jed Walter. <laughs> to be honest, yes. <laughs> yeah, your seat won I'm me. driving the bus, though. Come on. <laughs> the Jed Walter bus. All right, let's get into the champion data all-Australian team, which is basically bait to get me angry because there's one <laughs> one Carlton Blue on it and he's the sub. And it's only the best player in the AFL, Patrick Cripps. Well, Best player, non Jed Walter, non Harley <laughs> division, obviously. <laughs> so, third uh, best. Let's run through it really quickly yep. out the back. Dan Houston, Sam, uh, Sam Collins? Yep. Jeez. <laughs> Nick Blakey, Holmes, Maxi Holmes, Jeremy McGovern, Bailey Dale. Whoa, where uh, Nick Dacos, Josh Kelly, who no, hasn't played for the last month. I don't mind that. Though. Six weeks. Yeah. Chad Chudley Warner, Aaron Norton, again, hasn't played for a month. Yeah. What's going on there? 
the Cheezle. Cheezle. Oh, forward. Tyson definitely. Stengel, don't mind that. Jakey, the J-Train Waterman. Isaac Rankine hasn't played for a month either. Maximus Gornicus. Uh, Isaac Heenman Heaney. Ponta 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 Pally. Uh, Jack Sinclair. <laughs> what? Matty Rowell. They're just throwing midfielders on the bench. Caleb Sarong and, and Zachy Butters. Butters with Paddy Cripps as the sub. Paddy Cripps as the sub is so disrespectful, but it's just going off the champion data stats, which we've always talked about. So, so often. Cool. Instant problems that jump out at this are Sam Collins, Kelly, Norton, Sheasel, Cripps as the sub, Jack Sinclair, Matt Sinclair I'd be a- putting you over Sheasel right now, and Sheasel shouldn't be – if he was playing, he's Why only Sheasel on a half-forward half, flank? He's been playing half-forward mid, but very rare to I just find it line. chaos that we've got dudes who haven't played in a month. Uh, actually on this. So, yeah. Disrespectful, I say. Where's Tom DeConing? Where's Weeders? Tom DeConing. Tom DeConing, only oh, the best where's, Ruckman in the comp. Where's Brody Grundy? Grundy has been awesome. Where's Jed Walter? I do enjoy that the Lizards made this team, though. Where's He's Stupid Sexy great. Flanders, to be honest? Like has sure. fantastic. Yeah, but season. maybe they don't rate Stupid Sexy Flanders because <laughs> his kicks are like worth like 0.1 of a percent of maybe. whatever it is. All right. Anyway, that's bait for me to get angry about. Maybe like, we A should. lot of Carlton fans have been yelling about this. Really? Yeah. Like a lot. Well, yeah, just seeing the sub next to Patrick Cousin, it just feels weird. Yeah. It is a kick in the team. It's, it's very weird, like, the, how they've got the who their best player is and how they do it all. And it's like, you look at some of it makes sense. Like, J-Train for West Coast makes sense at full forward. Nick Dacos in the middle, yes. Dan Houston, Max Holmes, McGovern, yeah. But, like, having two Eagles in the team yeah. and no blue in the starting team, you just look at it, weights and measures, and be like, eh, yeah, it stinks. <laughs> McGovern's been good. I don't know if he's been better than Waiters. And uh, yeah, but know. also we talk about injuries. He's missed a couple of games as well. Sure. So tricky one. It's a weird one. But Sam right. Collins. Yeah. What Brownlow update. Let's do it. Who's going to win the 2024 Chaz Brownlow medal? Errol Goulden. What? Interesting. Crips. Let's do it. Uh, at the moment, the AFL tracker has Heenman on 22 votes. 20. I Heaney, 22 votes. <laughs> P Crips, 19. Woe E Goulden. What? 18. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Andrew Dylan Gillen's going to do a new one this year. Imagine if he does that. That'd be and awesome. Dacos, 17. Imagine if he gets to the last game and goes, whoa. Yeah, well, <laughs> whoa. Zerit, 16. Chad Chundley Warner, CC Warner, 16. And then you have 15, you've got Bont, Neil, 14s, you've got Butters and Sarong, and Sam Walsh, which feels. Wait, no mention Noah Anderson? Nah, he's no. only got a home, as we talked he's about. Played, yeah, yeah, but they've won seven home games. He could be on 18. Nah. The ones that are 13 for Jordan Dawson feels a little bit optimistic. 13 for Max Holmes, again, how optimistic. Is, no, this how one is I'm Dawson look, above Holmes? This, this one I'm looking at, different side, has Dawson on 14. Yep. Interesting. Has Heaney leading, clearly. I mean, Dawson had a very nice purple patch there for a yeah. second, but outside of that, I do feel like the fact that we've got, what is it, th- three. three swans in the top five. That is crazy. Well, equal top five. because it feels uh, right. It, yeah, it does. Top they're... six, equal top six. Is it top with uh, Zeret yeah. as well? So that's Heaney, Gordon, Warner. At what point do they start uh, cannibalizing each other's votes? I, I think, think will, Warner's yeah. the one that's going to cannibalize their votes because his peaks are so good. Well, that the predictor's got two, two, three, three, three. Yeah. For him. Sorry. So he's just purple patching, whereas like Heaney could sneak a vote on Saturday against GWS, but Errol's absolutely going to get the th- two or three <laughs> in that game because Robottom was also good. Yes. But that's like a game where Heaney picks up one. Um, it feels in the last couple of weeks since the bye, Errol's just gone, hey, remember, remember how I finished last season? Same again. Yeah, the fact that they've got three in the top yeah. five, they got they have to be stealing votes from each other, surely. But it, but it could be two, three, three, two, two, three, because they're, it's not like they're close they're so games. They're smashing yeah. teams yeah. and they're on top of the ladder. I like that Cripps has been given two in this one in a game that he had 41 touches and won the game for them in the middle of but the Deconing game. But so. Deconing might. Deconing yeah. was, awesome. was awesome. I don't know if you're going to give him three for that game. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Interesting. Maybe. Ruckman get are underrated around. In, yeah. in the brown there anyway. So who is your leader in the clubhouse, Stats Boy? Who do you like the most? As in who do I think is going to win? Yeah. Or, uh... We've got a third of the season to go. We'll break down the Brownlow I reckon in depth next week. I said Errol at the start of the year, and I'm just going to stick with go, it. I'd love Heaney to win it. I might go Zachy Merritt. I think the odds are underrating him still a little bit. I, I think he's kicked a lot of goals for a midfielder. He is tagged up with a lot of ones in yeah. this tracker. I reckon he could I have a closer to There's twos, probably yeah. a few more twos in yeah. there than the ones. So, yeah, so I don't I'm going to go Zach Merritt just because I don't want to go anywhere from Sydney. I also just want Patrick Grips to be a two-time Brownlow winner. Yes. And not have a... To be a controversial win like he did the first time. I'd rather really Bond as well. He deserves a brown though, but I don't think he's going to win it. Does he deserve one? But that's the thing yes. where Bond could get those three votes. And we haven't even mentioned Nick Dacos who could just go, hey, hey, me, it's <laughs> yeah. me. Hey, check out the next six weeks where yeah. I average 40 disposals. Yeah, and just get 18 votes. Nice one. All right, there you go. It's do we chat? Uh, whatever the record is, Dane Swan's votes record, do we reckon it gets broken this year? No, I think nah. there's too much cannibalizing across yeah, the board. Yeah, there's too many good players, but I think. But that's where Nick Dacos can just go whack. I don't know if he gets nah. there. Yeah. Nice one. 
Anything else for before you super coach? But we can wrap that up in tomorrow's show, I think. Yeah, Nothing do it tomorrow, else? I reckon, yeah. Good stuff. All yeah. right. That'll do for AFL Today for today until tomorrow. That's when we're back with AFL Today on tomorrow for the Thursday team Which show for back. AFL Today. Next week. Okay. Next week. But either way, that's been good chat. So thanks for jumping on there, Alex. Cheers, Jim. And the Stats Boy. Thank you. And, of course, to Callum Dick from the Courier Mail and Code Sports. Go read all his stuff about the Lions and the Suns and all the good stuff. That was really fun to have him on. We'll have him on later on this season as well. Remember to smash a like across all the socials to see us doing lots of fun stuff. Throughout the year, Facey, IG, X, TikTok, of course, YouTube. You can also check out the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, NBA Australia. There are trades and draft stuff coming out the wazoo. So get right around NBA Australia as well as hold all tickets for all the GG stuff with Alex. I need a host for tomorrow. No one's available. Stats boy, done. No, I'm not get doing Stats that. guy's nana in there. All right. Yeah. Subscribe, star, and like all of our shows across all your podcast apps as well. Get around them like, I don't know, me getting around Jed Walter. It's a lot. I'm all about it driving the bus. All right, that's it. We'll catch you tomorrow for the Thursday team show of AFL today. Until then, look after yourselves and remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today podcast, the Football Today podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.